In this video, we'll be going over the parts of a chest tube with nursing considerations. Be sure to stick around till the end as I am going to test your knowledge. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. A chest tube drainage unit are commonly used to help remove an accumulation of fluid or air from the pleural cavity, such as pus, blood, and serous fluids. This in turn will help restore a normal negative pressure within the pleural cavity. So the benefits of a chest tube is to help restore normal lung function by allowing lung re-expansion. When you receive assignment for a patient with a chest tube, you always want to verify the chest tube order at change of shift or with transferring your patient. This is where mistakes occur. So just make sure what the nurse tells you in report coincides with the order set. You also want to verify the site and make sure the chest tube is secure in place. When handling a chest tube, be sure to do your hand hygiene and use gloves. The supplies that you should always have at the bedside consist of gloves, Cali clamps, sterile water, your four x four gauze, Vaseline gauze in the event you lose placement of the chest tube from the patient's chest and some tape. Now let's dive into the parts of a thoracil chamber chest tube. Check all connections to ensure the system is airtight. Be sure to keep the chest tube positioned below the level of the patient's chest. So there are three components you have, your section setup, your water seal chamber, and your collection drainage unit. And this is the tube that connects to the patient and should have a dressing applied per your hospital guidelines. Some nursing interventions. You want to avoid dependent loops and assess the site and listen for signs of air leaks such as a hissing sound. So let's elaborate more on each section. The suction setup is the amount of vacuum that is prescribed by the ordering physician, as it will specify in the order set. So you will fill with sterile water from the top port shown here, and it will be filled to the desired level as prescribed, so it could be 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters, or 25 centimeters to suction. And this is the port that you attach to the suction line. You should observe gentle bubbling and the opening of the top of the suction chamber should not be occluded. As a nursing intervention, always remember to make periodic checks of the water level to make sure the ordered amount of suction is being delivered. With the water seal chamber, it is labeled number one on the top. This is where you will fill the water seal chamber. You will fill the water chamber to the line indicated on the front of the lower line that says fill two with arrow pointing down. Be sure to fill with sterile water, which is about 110 cc's. Please take note that gentle bubbling is indicated and should resolve with time as the lung re-expands. As a nursing consideration, always remember an increase or continuous bubbling is a sign of an air leak or potential pneumothorax. You must immediately notify your healthcare provider. And if bubbling stops suddenly, it can indicate blockage. And most importantly, if you see water above the line, it signifies that negative pressure is achieved within the patient's pleural space. Now let's talk about the collection drainage unit. The chamber is replaceable and can be removed with physician approval. So you want to temporarily clamp the drainage tube from the thoracic catheter. You can use the clamp that is attached to the tube or Kelly clamps. My preference are Kelly clamps. This will prevent fluid from entering the collection chamber unit. You will then proceed by taking off the blue safety guard referred to as the floor stand and twisting chamber clockwise and pull down gently using universal precautions. Then insert the new collection chamber and rotate counterclockwise as the chamber will snap securely into a locked position and immediately unclamp and replace the floor stand. As a nursing consideration, remember the chamber is clear for visibility and to monitor drainage output, color, and fluid type. Don't forget to mark your output with the permanent marker prior to the end of shift to pass on to the receiving nurse. To minimize the risk of the drainage unit from tipping over, the chest tube drainage has a removable stand that can be detached and placed vertically on the floor to allow for stability. Internally, these tubes have a baffle system and are designed to minimize the risk of fluid spilling or mixing fluids from within the unit, but ensure safety and use these safety guards for added security. 
It's the family members that get me so nervous, especially when the patient is in recovery and the patient's family comes and they sit right next to the chest tube. I'm like, oh no, can you like sit on the opposite side? It kind of gives me anxiety. Anyways, so you can always use these hang rails on both sides. If you're traveling with a patient, I'll hang it over the end of the bedside with the use of the hang rails and then right by the patient to ensure safety for added protection. Now let's reinforce the content with a Q&A on four key crucial NCLEX questions. So question number one, why is a chest tube needed? The answer is a chest tube is utilized to help remove air and or fluid that has entered the pleural space that caused a partial or complete collapse of the lung. Question number two, what are the two primary reasons for a chest tube? So reason number one, the goal is to reestablish negative pressure from within the pleural space by re-expanding the lung. And reason number two, this is achieved by removing fluid or air from the pleural space with the help of a chest tube drainage unit. Question number three, what are the three components of a chest tube? Number one is your suction control. Number two is your water seal chamber. And number three is your collection chamber unit. Question number four, what does continuous bubbling of a water seal chamber indicate? The answer, it indicates an air leak and should be evaluated promptly by a physician. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.